Is it audible? Yes, ma'am. It's audible. Shall we start, ma'am? Yes, yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, so, on behalf of uh, Sri Krishna College of Engineering and Technology, uh, I welcome Dr. Usha Ishwaran. Um, so, so I'll just give uh, the brief introduction. Professor Dr. Usha Ishwaran is a motivational speaker, entrepreneur, academician, educationalist, career analyst, professional certified life skill coach, certified NLP master practitioner, certified professional public speaking coach, a parenting coach, and YouTuber. So apart from being the planning board member of uh, Trivalu University, she is also actively engaged in imparting skill development, career development, and academic consultancy to seek added CEO. Seek is engaged in skill development, career development guidance, and uh, academic consultancy aimed at enhancing the employability of youth. An alumnus of an Anamalai and uh, Andhra University with bachelor's and master's degrees in electronics and instrumentation engineering, she was awarded the doctorate by Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University, Hyderabad, for her pioneering work on biosensors in the year 2011. A professional with over 30 years of experience in the fields of education and industry. She has held leadership positions in engineering institutions as, as principal, director, dean, and placement officer. She is a specialist in educational, uh, institutional skill, and uh, teaching impart, imparting processes and placements. She is also the uh, chartered in, engineer. In addition to being a member in the editorial team of over and uh, ten international technical journals for reviewing technical papers that are presented for publications. Over the last few years. She has conducted numerous training programs and seminars for uh, corporate and uh, institutions that have enriched the knowledge of participants through interaction and knowledge sharing, contributing to their improved learning and development. She has addressed over 20 lakh people on various platforms. She has conducted stress relieving, parenting, and the skills workshops for more than 12, 2 lakhs of people through mass contact programs. Dr. Usha Ishwaran is a recipient of uh, the Coveted Rex, Camweight Global Fellowship and uh, Kramavir uh, Chakra Award, instituted by Icon Geo and uh, the UN. This award has been bestowed upon uh, Professor Dr. Usha Ishwaran for her uh, consistent and dedicated service to the society. She has been an active volunteer in extending help to needy during times of distress and uh, as sought by the needy through uh, reaching out of people around her. Dr. Uza has successfully conceptualized, developed, customized, and conducted skill enhancement programs for large governmental organizations like the Railway Protection Force, and the same have been well received and have since been approved by the railways as the standard part of their training curriculum and are being conducted on the pan India basis under her guidance. She has successfully assisted organizations in achieving their business objectives through the cost effective and skill enhancement programs that are designed and customized suiting individual needs. Her corporate training included sessions on soft and hard skills development and attitude building. She has conducted customized programs on critical thinking, creative thinking, anger management, conflict resolution, emotional intelligence, communication skills, interpersonal skills, public speaking skills, decision making, complex problem solving, time management, entrepreneurship, teamwork, and ethical leadership, analytical thinking, decision making, and functional skills. She is passionate in supporting social causes and assists numerous NGOs in the state. She is also the Pink Ambassador for NGO Chennai Turns Pink, promoting awareness on breast cancer and women-centric uh, centric issues. 
she has been the guest speaker on various television talk shows on the skills parenting skills social and women centric issues uh, so thank you very much uh, ma'am uh, so now the session is yours thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible, and your screen is also visible. Okay. Thank you so much, and a very good morning to each and every one of you. And I thank wholeheartedly Krishna College for organizing this ACT sponsored uh, two-week short-term training program on uh, zero-shot learning by convex combination of semantic embeddings. And today I am going to talk about the IOTs and uh, its applications. So I've been given a, a wonderful introduction and nice to hear from you. Thank you so much. And uh, my dear uh, participants, let us go into the session. So we are going to talk about the IoT. So what is this IoT, Internet, Network of, network of Things, Computing Elements? The need for networking was uh, felt after realizing uh, that the computing elements did tasks that are impossible for humans within a given amount of time, like uh, mathematical calculations and uh, the computing elements. Uh, um, uh, if you talk about the war factor of the computing uh, elements, a modern Raspberry Pi is more powerful than the first Apollo mission computer. And to expand this power without physical restrictions, it was needed to keep them connected at a distance. And the network war factor, if you see, we are still communicating with the uh, Voyager. And uh, the IoT war factor is uh, your smartphone is a typical IoT device and it is a computing element that is a network always. And why is IoT dis uh, discussed everywhere now and uh, what changed actually? So. Uh, coming to that, uh, it's mainly because of the shrinking size of the computing elements and the price. And the wall factor is the Apollo guidance computer was 70 LBS and was as big as the Dell server. Uh, whereas now this Apple watch is 100 times more powerful and you know how, uh, how much it weighs and also the cost. And uh, coming to the uh, speed, the increasing speed of communication networks, um, the war factor is the 5G delivers 20 GBPS, compare this to earlier 56K modems. And also ubiquitous nature of networking with wireless technologies such as 5G, Wi-Fi, et cetera. So let me tell you a small uh, uh, story. Uh, three men from different uh, countries actually gathered at a bar and uh, they started boasting about their technical uh, sub superiority of their uh, countries. And the first man said uh, their archaeologists uh, dug a historic site and found copper wires everywhere and conducted that. Uh, and they have concluded that their civilization was networked. And the second man said that uh, their historic site had fiber wires and concluded that they were uh, fiber networked, better than copper wire, he boasted. The third man said their archaeologists dug a mile and did not find anything, and therefore they had wireless technology. Just a story to say like how we have transformed. And these IoT applications promise to bring immense value into our lives actually with newer wireless networks superior sensors and revolutionary computing capabilities the internet of things could be the next frontier in the race for its share of the wallet and what is this iot imagine an intelligent device such as such as a traffic camera the camera can monitor the streets for traffic congestion accidents, weather conditions, and communicate this data to a common gateway. The IoT applications are expected to equip billions of everyday objects with connectivity and intelligence. This gateway also receives data from other such cameras and relays the information further to a city-wide traffic monitoring system. 
for instance let us take this uh, example the municipal corporation decides to repair a certain road now considering uh, this smart traffic system it quickly learns and predicts uh, how the traffic will be well it uses the machine learning to find the traffic and uh, the smart system can thus analyze the situation predict its impact and relay the information to other cities that connect to the same highway via their own respective smart systems so what happens here is the traffic management system can analyze the data acquired and derive routes around the project to avoid the bottlenecks there was some bottleneck there was some road work going on and this was sensed by the sensor and all the entire system had the information about this so now the system could also convey live instructions to drivers through smart devices and also the radio channels so this may cause a traffic congestion on the way to a national highway this insight is sent to the city wide traffic monitoring system and meanwhile the city schools and the workplaces near the project would be would also be called to adjust their uh, schedule so this is something which is going to um, help us to to proceed with our normal routine life without any interruption because of the senses the the situation has been sensed and it has been communicated to each and every one so that they can adjust the routine and they can take a different route so that they will not be affected so this creates a network of self dependent systems which leverage a real time control so this is what is the ultimate application of the iot the real time control so this is just one example of the um, iot application but what is iot iot is essentially a platform where embedded devices are connected to the internet so they can collect and exchange data with each other so it enables devices to interact collaborate and learn from each other's experience just like how human do so you are uh, likely benefiting from the internet of things today whether whether or not many of them are not many of us are not familiar with the term actually we just talk about iot's but we really do not know how many of them are implemented and we have not uh, felt it like using it so if your phone automatically connects to your car radio or if you have a smart watch counting your steps then you have adopted one small piece of a very large iot pie even if you have not adopted the name yet you can feel proud that yes i am using an iot device and iot may sound like a business uh, buzzword but in reality it's a real technological revolution that will impact everything we do it's going to come like a tsunami so it is the next it tsunami of new possibility that is destined to change the face of technology as we know and iot uh is the interconnectivity between the things using wireless communication technology so to this is used to connect the objects locations animals or people to the internet this it allows for direct transmission of the seamless sharing of data this is what is the ultimate need we need to get the data so that we will know what to do about it so to get the data we need to have sensors and the connectivity and that is what the iot does and iot represents a massive way of technology technical innovation so highly valuable companies will be built so when you you get this iot into existence um uh, highly valuable companies will be built and the new ecosystems will emerge from bridging the offline world with the online into one gigantic new network so we have to be online always this is what is the ultimate need of the r so that we will have a real time solution and problem solving methods so our limited understanding of the possibilities hinders our ability to see the future applications of any new technology so the mainstream adoption of desktop computers just take an example of the desktop computers and the internet especially the internet uh, uh, they didn't take hold until they became affordable and usable so people were so scared if internet comes into picture then we will lose jobs and that is something scary i don't know anything about all those things but once it was made affordable and when we start using you know like we 
started knowing its value and when that occurred fantastic and creative new innovation is in used so we are on the cusp of that tipping point with the internet of things also the internet of things is also in the stage where we had the desktops and the internet entered into our life so the fear what we had earlier the same fear we have any new technology for that instance when it comes you know like we will have a fear like how it's going to change our life and it will turn your smartphone into the command center for the both digital and physical objects in your life you will live and work smarter not harder so this is the need of the hour of the 21st century need is you need to be smarter and you don't have to work harder you don't have to work physically you know you just take the data and if you know how to use the information then you are the king and you are the queen of the world and what we are seeing now is only the tip of the iceberg we we have not gone deep into it and once we start using it and get the feel of it we will know the importance of it and in this world of rapid digital interaction the main idea of iot is to integrate on connect items or things to an internet for accomplishing intelligent recognition and network management so uh, the iot can provide communication connection and internetworking between the various devices or physical objects as a source of information etc and coming to the uh, fourth industrial revolution so everybody talks about 4.0 so we also have to talk about it because our iot is part of it and it's going to rule the fourth industrial revolution so following the introduction of the mechanical production systems work sharing mass production and the automation of production processes a fourth industrial revolution is now on the horizon and the term introduced for this is industry 4.0 0 already points towards intelligent and network system so that is what is the meaning of the industry 4.0 towards intelligent and network systems and previously separated production environments are combined to produce universal production worlds which are partly of a physical nature and partly attain a new functionality in the cyberspace of web connectivity and how iot will drive the fourth industrial revolution so that is what we need to know like why we are talking about the industry 4.0 the ongoing industrial uh, the digital transformation of manufacturing is having such a dramatic impact that it's been dubbed the fourth industrial revolution this revolution has just begun just begin but it's already changing how business operate and in the fourth industrial revolution big data the analytics and the digital technology will play a numerous roles from improving the energy usage to making manufacturing safer this is going to be very very useful in manufacturing sector because that is where you need to uh, you need to control lot of things and reduce the human intervention and you need to have a smooth process to go on and what is this industrial Uh, fourth industrial revolution when you talk about it the coming on the heels of the third industrial revolution which is also called as a digital revolution the fourth industrial revolution has new ways for technology and connected devices to be used in the business and society so it adds new devices we also had the digital technology in the third revolution third industrial revolution but still the fourth industrial revolution automates a lot and that is what is the speciality of this 21st century and some of the emerging fields in the fourth industrial revolution include the iot robotics machine learning artificial intelligence nanotechnology quantum quantum computing and biotechnology if you just see in engineering colleges a lot of new courses have been taken by many engineering colleges with this latest new technologies as a, a, an area of uh, engineering actually and uh, you need some basics to go into that actually you need to have a strong basics to learn about all these new technologies directly you cannot take up all those new technologies to uh, become an expert in that particular area because why i am telling you is all these uh, requires collaboration actually everyone working in a team need to have an expertise in one or the other so you need to have a knowledge of everything also so that is what is the ultimate need 
and uh, people say that iot technology is the fourth industrial revolution people say that iot out of all the new technologies iot is going to be the master of all this technology and that is what we can call it as a fourth industrial revolution and for the previous two and a half centuries technological advancements like steam powered manufacturing and the nuclear and electrical energy production have relied on the massive consumption of water with I iot advancements we now have an ability to save water and other essential resources instead of haphazardly consuming them so that is and one more thing like it monitors and it also helps us to save a lot of things a lot of natural resources can be saved with the help of iot's as the global population continues to grow as food demand another most important area is the food demand increases as infrastructural ages and as climatic change worsens iot technology as a method of resource optimization and conservation may very well be the thing that saves us all and in many many areas we can use this and the applications while many organizations might still be in denial about how industry 4.0 could impact their businesses or struggling to find the talent or the knowledge to know how to best adopt it for their unique use cases several others are already implementing many places if you see that in abroad many places many factories have started already in implementing these changes today and preparing for a future where smart machines improve their business that is what is the secret of this success in the industry 4.0 as well as in the 21st century this is going to improve the business improve the quality of life improve the society improve and improve the problem solving methods also so some of them are uh, the uh, identifying the opportunities like since uh, the connected machines collect tremendous amount uh, volume of data a lot of data will be connected because a lot of sensors will be sensing a lot of data and that can inform the maintenance performance and other issues as well as uh, analyze the data to identify patterns and insights that would be impossible for a human to do in a reasonable time frame the industry 4.0 offers the opportunity for the manufacturers to optimize their operations quickly and efficiently by knowing what needs attention so that is what is the important thing many of the companies many of the manufacturing companies will not come to know about the breakdown of a machine until it breaks down so that causes a lot of loss and also the quality of the products produced by the manufacturing industries come down because of the deterioration of the machines due to different environmental conditions and this is what we see that the connectivity the data in computational form human interaction interaction advanced engineering analytics and intelligence and you can see this this is an african gold mine actually by using the data from sensors uh, what happened in its equipment they used the sensors to collect the data the mine identified the problem with the oxygen levels during the leaching so when they were taking the gold you know they they started understanding uh, that when the oxygen levels comes down so people going into the mines they die because of lack of oxygen and this is been sensed by the sensors which they used in their equipment and once it is fixed they they, they know what is to be done in both of them i think uh, some mic is on So can you please ask the person to turn off the mic? Somebody's mic is on.
okay by identifying that you know the oxygen levels during the leaching once fixed they were able to increase their yield by 2.7 percent which saved them around 20 million dollars so what's happening why there is a lot of noise Kirumarai so. Selvi, Madam, can you please turn off your mic? Thank you. Okay, so this uh, IOT helped these African gold mine people to identify the problem with the oxygen levels and because of that they had saved um, more than 20 million dollars annually. And uh, the Internet of Things and the cloud, the key component of the Industry 4.0 is the Internet of Things that is character characterized uh, by connecting devices. And you can see the connected factory in action so how they were able to uh, limit the human intervention and also have an effective way of uh, performing things and uh, using sensors they can just uh, they can sense what is happening uh, at different places like you don't have to be physically present there to know what is happening so all these things are the most important things that is used in the manufacturing industry and you can see the top 10 ranking in the technology in 2019 the Internet of Things was a ranked one, number one, and uh, even in 2018, it is number one. So this is what is the need of the R, and that is what we are going to talk about today. And this is what is the history of uh, Internet of uh, Things, and uh, I think you're all aware of it. Uh, let us go in, in into it, actually. The Internet of Things is the network of physical objects or the things embedded with electronic software sensors and network connectivity which enables these objects to collect and exchange data that is what it happens and the sensors will collect data and it will be uh, exchanged to uh, required places where the action has to be taken so iot is defined as the intelligent interactivity between the human and things to exchange information and knowledge for a new value creation. So it is a complex, it complete solution encompassing three main technology components, namely the connected things with the uh, embedded sensors, connectivity and the infrastructure. And most importantly, the analytics and the applications. Here we can see that IoT extends connections to objects. Every object could be identified and connected to other objects. With the smart sensors, objects become intelligent. So that is why uh, the Internet of Things is uh, being sought more because they become intelligent. They know what to do and what action to be taken. So that is what is the uh, the, the the speciality of these IoTs and uh, these devices are often uh, called as a connected or smart devices. They can be con called as a connected device because they are connected to uh, sense the information, take decision, and also to communicate the same to the human. And also they, they are called as smart devices because they are intelligent enough to sense what is to be done based on the data they receive. And they can uh, sometimes talk to other related devices. Have you just heard of the machine talking to a machine? Yes, they can talk to uh, devices and uh, the process is called as a machine to machine communication and act on the information they get from each other. So that is what is the ultimate thing. Why do we need this Internet of Things when man can talk to a man? The reason is like we cannot be in a place or 24 hours monitoring something 
whereas we need to have some sensors which will be helping us to collect data give us information and take immediate action when it is needed that is the reason why we are going for this uh, internet of things and also the iot technology is uh, the resultant of uh, the from major mega trends actually the market and the technology as we have seen in seeing in the slide actually as a result Uh, the implication of uh, these two mega trends will force global society to implement new technology in order to enhance productivity optimize resources and increase sharing efficiency while maintaining individual needs so that is what is the ultimate thing and the life cycle of the internet of things is the collect communicate analyze and act so just like internet has changed the way we work and communicate with each other by connecting us through the www that is the world wide web that is internet people who came up with this idea have also realized that this iot ecosystem is not limited to a particular field but has business applications in the areas of home automation vehicle automation and so on so that is what is it and the smart systems and the internet of things are driven by a combination of sensors which is also called as an activators connectivity and people and process these are the three main components which are required and to be designed so the first one is the of uh, the um, uh, collection we are going to talk about the four fundamental components of iot system uh, which will tell us how the iot works and the first one is the collection of data that is nothing but using the sensors and the first the sensors or devices help in collecting very minute data from the surrounding environment that is what is the uh, need of the r and all of this collected data can have various degrees of complexities ranging from a simple temperature monitoring sensor or a complex full video feed also and you may have to increase the levels of the signals in order to uh, analyze in order to sense in order to work on it in order to do some research in order to take some decisions a lot of things happen so sensors are used to collect data and a device can have multiple sensors also so um, uh, that can bundle together to do more than just sense things there will be multiple things in a single device also for example our phone is a device that has multiple sensors such as gps we have accelerometer we have camera but our phone does not simply sense things the most rudimentary step will always remain to pick and collect data from surrounding environment be it a stand alone sensor or a multiple uh, devices you can see the example of these uh, sensors we are giving our all the digital nervous system location data using dps sensors eyes and ears using cameras and microphones along with sensory organs that can measure everything from temperature to pressure changes so you can see there are so many sensors and based on the application we can choose and use and next is communication so communication uh, the the data is collected so the first step we have collected the data and it is sent to a cloud infrastructure but it needs a medium for transport so the sensors can be connected to the cloud through various mediums of communication and transport such as cellular networks satellite networks wifi bluetooth wide area networks which we can also call it call it as a wan low power wide area network and many more things and every option we choose has some specifications and trade offs between the power consumption range bandwidth and so on and so forth so choosing the best connectivity option in the iot system is very very important this is what is going to make the real time sensing and taking action so connectivity plays a major role and then comes the analysis once the data is collected and it is uh it gets to the cloud the software performs processing on the acquired data so we have got the data we have taken it to the cloud and now we need to 
process the acquired data. So this can range from something very simple, such as checking that the temperature reading on the device, such as your AC or heaters, is within the acceptable range or not. So your data is collected, taken to the cloud, and based on the application, you are verifying whether it is fine or not. And in, it can sometimes also be very complex, such as identifying objects, maybe some intruders in your house using a computer vision on video. It can go to any extent where the IOTs on the whole will be able to sense and analyze the data. And But there might be a situation when a user interaction is required, for example, what if when the temperature is too high or if there is an intruder in your house, that's where the user comes into picture then the action the next the information made available to the end user we have collected the data sent to the cloud we have made the analysis and now we have to send the the information to the end user in some way so this uh, this can uh, be achieved by triggering alarms and sms to your uh, phone or a mail a notifying email or uh, something like that. And also a user sometimes might have uh, an interface through which they can actively check in on their IoT system. So that is also uh, possible. And for example, a user you has a camera installed in his house and he might want to check the video recordings and all the feeds through a web server. So that is also possible. And this is happening even now. I check my uh, company uh, real time uh, videos and the recorded videos and uh, what the people are doing how uh, we can sense the uh, information from wherever we are with our mobile and this is one of the example of the iot system and the aim of the internet of thing is mainly man to man machine and machine to machine interaction so this is what we need to achieve and the internet of things offers a number of benefits to organizations enabling them to monitor their overall business processes improve the customer experience save time and money enhance employee productivity integrate and adapt business models, make better business decisions, and generate more revenue. So this is what everybody need, you know, like a comfortable living. And we need to have time for our life in, rather than doing all the monotony and the routine jobs, you know, that can be automated and we can sit back and relax and live our life. And this is what even the manufacturers need. So you can see here the IoT enables devices, home appliances, cars, and much more to be connected to and exchange data over internet. And, and we are only in the beginning stages of IoT. The number of IoT devices reached 8.4 billion in 2017, and they are expecting in 2020, by the end of the 30 billion devices will be connected. And you can see the applications, smart home, wearables. You can see that smart home is the maximum um, uh, being used and then the wearables every one of us have uh, wearables and a smart city you know this word smart city has been widely uh, brought in into the news uh, news magazines in the news and the debates and uh, all the uh, even uh, the webinars uh, every international conferences the smart city project is very well taken in every country and the smart grid industrial internet connected car connected health smart retail smart supply chain smart farming and so on so um, an article um, um, says actually we will need nearly two lakh more it workers that they aren't yet in the pipeline people are not there because they are not being trained they don't have um, adequate skills to work in this industry so there is a lot of need in this industry and uh, it is a collaborative work. They may be on any discipline. They can learn what is required and they can work and do a lot of entrepreneurship on this IoT areas. And they can do, they have a huge scope in this area. The thing is they are not trained and the, the skill sets are not adequate enough. And you can see this 5G use cases, you know, 5G is very, very essential for our IOTs, the precision agricultural and uh, environmental map mapping, smart manufacturing, smart building, immersive and virtual collaborations like artificial uh, intelligence. Uh, you have augmented reality, virtual reality, smart logistics, smart IOT energy and health management. A lot of use cases are there, which is mandatory and it is going to lead us to 
uh, uh, peak, the country which is going to implement all these things is going to be totally digitally connected and it's going to improve its economy like anything. And you can see this smart lighting enabled for future technology, educating and improving society by monitoring and managing empower daily digital life by network connectivity, effectively managing resources remotely. So th these are some of the applications I'm going to tell about a lot of applications and uh, the something like when when they can take decision when they are intelligent enough, we call them smart. So in uh, IoT applications also, we call all these things as smart. And the IoT top uses uh, use cases in 2020, if you see, they are autonomous and connected vehicles, smart security for business and homes, connecting your home to the Internet of Things, smart watches, fitness trackers and other wearables, machine to machine connected devices, supply chains of the future, drones for industrial and search and rescue operations, smart cities, energy, transportation, parking and more and farm to tech to table so these are all widely expected and uh, uh, the smart factories if, if you see like uh, they have the use cases like an enterprise enterprise asset management predictive maintenance industrial process automation and optimization energy management and in smart cities you need uh, smart lighting smart parking uh, one minute. and waste management and also in water management, you need water conservation, smart irrigation, leakage management, water quality management, and digital health, ultraviolet radiation monitoring, fall detection, companion robots, medical fridges, patient surveillance, remote patient uh, monitoring, and in smart retail supply chain control, near field communication payment, layout optimization, smart product management, and in smart homes, we have remote control ap appliances and the home intrusion detection system like smart locks, motion detections and smart logistics uh, need uh, fleet tracking, platooning, connected vehicles and in smart metering, smart grid and so on. So starting with popular connected uh, devices already on the market like smart thermo stats we have connected cars activity trackers like uh, the watches every one of us would have seen and will be using and the smart outlets parking sensors so these are all certain things which are in real time and the connected cars are in i mean in research and in some uh, some countries they are trying to bring it into practice and it, it and also it is quickly advancing to the diverse applications like the home consumer where the light bulbs security pet feeding irrigation controller smoke alarm refrigerator infotainment washer dryer etc and the transport mobility traffic routing telematics package monitoring smart parking insurance adjustment supply chain and etc and health and body if you see patient care elderly monitoring this elderly monitoring is widely used abroad actually many many elderly people stay alone in the home and this smart devices the iotis help them to send uh, sms or message to hospitals when they are sick and also remote diagnostic equipment monitoring hospital hygiene and then buildings you have hvac security lighting electrical transit and also in cities, you have electrical distribution, maintenance, surveillance, signage, utilities, smart grid, emergency services, waste managers, management, and so on. A lot of applications which are tried and trying and it's being implemented in some places. So internet of everything. They create and expand new markets and services and also create better experience to build better relationships and they empower people and increase their efficiency and deeper insights for greater decision making as i said when we see through our eyes we may not get that many data so when you want to take some decision you need to have the complete data and these sensors and the iot's help us to collect in enormous amount of data for taking decisions so let us start with the IoT applications uh, wearables. So the wearable technology is a hallmark of IoT applications and probably uh, it is one of the earliest industries to have deployed uh, the IoT at its service. And we happen to see the Fitbits, heart rate monitors and the smart watches everywhere these days. And one of the lesser known wearables includes the Guardian 
glucose monitoring uh, device this is very helpful for the elderly people because many sugar patients are there and they don't have to go to hospital every time to check their glucose level and there is a equipment or the instrument which helps us and the device is developed to aid people suffering from diabetes and uh, it detects the glucose levels in the body using a tiny electrode called glucose sensor placed under the skin and uh, the relay it relays the information via radio frequency to a monitoring device and you can see some wearables um, uh, some uh, pictures are shown like how we, we we ourselves every one of us will could have seen and will be wearing one of them and this is how the building blocks of the wearable system works and uh, the wearable uh, input devices and output devices if you see the keyboard and mouse alternatives, tab alternatives, eye trackers, head trackers, pens, gesturing, barcode readers, many types of input devices are used in the wearables. And the output will be either a paper and a paper output or a non-speech auditory output or a flat panel, text to speech, or head mounted displays also. We will have display where we can see the output and also you have the functionalities and application areas. You have sensors like light, sound, speed, acceleration, humidity, etc. And the consumer oriented application, some people use it for fitness and sports, fashion and apparel, home automation, gaming, and non consumer oriented applications like defense and security, manufacturing industry, and healthcare. And also wearables, like we all see this Apple Watch, includes a heart rate sensor, GPS, and an accelerometer fully integrated into the Apple ecosystem. So there are a lot more to come. They are releasing a lot of new uh, healthcare-related uh, 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 watches in which a uh, lot of new uh, requirements related to health. Even the oxygen levels are also now tested uh, after this COVID. And uh, the, uh, the, the wearables are increasing um, because it is easy to wear and every human can have it. And especially the healthcare-related applications are focused. And you have this uh, Fitbit uh, Flex Google Glass uh, and the Nike uh, Sport Watch. And you have this Cam uh, Samsung's Galaxy Gear. Um, it's a, again a smartwatch. And also the Sony Core, which, which is a wrist-worn waterproof wearable smart ba band with a built-in sensor. So it records the activity level throughout the day. So we also have, uh, we'll be seeing like how much uh, deep we slept we had our sleep la the, the previous night how many times we got disturbed and um, uh, our uh, heart beats and the uh, everything related to your recording uh, the activity levels how you are uh, moving around what you're doing etc and uh, coming to this um, when we talk about this iot uh, smart home applications actually um, uh, i think of uh, the jarvis uh, that is the ai home automation employed by mark zuckerberg in his home he tried to have this which can uh, control uh, his lights thermostat doors uh, spotify that is the music cameras toaster and um, uh, so on and so forth a lot of things he tried to implement and uh, if you just see this uh, home scenario, smart home scenario, uh, an incident or a, a story or a um, situation has been described in this uh, slide, actually. So the futuristic scenario, uh, actually, this is a futuristic uh, scenario. And this is uh, illustrated in this slide. And it is based on the smart home domain, which plays the significant role in the smart cities, actually, uh, because the home the, the the refrigerator in the home getting connected to an ice cream manufacturer through the cloud and uh, the the customer he is able to get what he wants without him directly going and purchasing and also not directly uh, checking the fridge whether the item is present or not let us take this man that is his name is mike and uh, he bought a new refrigerator and uh, he bought it home and plugged it into the power. The fridge automatically identifies the availability of Wi-Fi in the house. So that is what you can see in the first number that uh, it identifies the uh, Wi-Fi. And there is a door sensor, RFID uh, reader, and also a temperature sensor in the fridge. And then uh, coming to um, uh, the step uh, uh, two, what happens? Uh, this refrigerator communicates to the sensor publisher and informs about, uh, see from here, it informs to the sensor publisher 
and uh, it provides information something uh, like an available sensors of the whatever the data collected from the rfid and also the door sensor and the temperature all this data this fridge is connect getting connected through this wi-fi to this publisher sensor publisher and gives that information to them then coming to the step three actually the sensor publisher communicates with mike to check whether he likes to publish the sensors attached to the refrigerator to the cloud so it asks like do you want all these informations to be uploaded in the cloud or not some may be interested some may not be interested and we assume that the mic is already registered with the sp sensor publisher in the previous uh, transaction and then uh, later mike receives an email from a company called dairy ice cream via this uh, sp called uh, easy sensing and an ice cream manufacturer with an offer so this is what is the information he is getting through the cloud and the dairy ice cream is interested to access to the rfid reader and the door sensor attached to the freezer in the mike's refrigerator that is mainly because that will uh, have the rfid tagged to the ice cream and the cheese packet whatever is related to their company and they will know whenever the door is open and when they consume this ice cream or the cheese the company will know the count of uh, the ice creams left over in the fridge so that is what they sense from the from the company and this fridge is in mike's home so um, uh, so they will offer him um, uh, the dairy ice cream uh, they they will offer for uh, uh, giving a 3% offer or a 5% offer offer if he buys monthly so that deal they have with mike and as mike also likes the dairy ice cream products he agrees to the 3% discount offer instead of a monthly fee and uh, a week later mike receives an email from a company called the productive analytics which have been uh, sent on behalf of the golden cheese company so the golden cheese company uh, also sends a similar offer so this request also comes through easy sensing so however the offer um, uh, he gets the offer he has to decide whether he wanted to purchase it or not then he gives an information and then the manufacturer will send him what is required so he will be able to sense every month you know like every day how much he is consuming whether it is required then automatically the product will be delivered in mike's place without him giving an order so that is really wonderful and uh, coming to the healthcare actually the iot applications can turn reactive medical based systems into proactive wellness uh, based system because when it comes to health one has to be proactive and we need to have precautionary steps so the resources that current medical research uses the um, uses a lack um, what it lacks is uh, the critical real world information is lacking they may have the information which uh, which is the past information it is already uh, the history only they will have they will not know the real time so but in healthcare the real time information is very very essential to save the lives so it mostly uses the leftover data in general so um, the iot actually opens ways to a sea of valuable data through analysis real time field data and testing and the internet of things also improves the current devices in power precision and availability so that is another uh, important thing uh, the additional benefit of iot and also it focuses on creating systems rather than just equipment and also here um, um, uh, let us see how it works here you can see um, iot has a potential to change the way the healthcare is delivered through significant technological disruption you can see uh, many places like how this iot is helpful the physical devices such as the weighing scale thermometer the patient's uh, vital uh, monitoring device such as the glucose blood pressure heart rate and uh, the activity monitoring the what the person is doing the activity monitoring in 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 um, uh, elderly people what happens even if they fall you know like there will be an accelerometer sensor which will sense and then it will sense send a message and also it will detect the heart rate and uh, if the the person uh, has a, a, a unique heart uh, rate being uh, detected immediately the message goes to the hospital and also the blood sugar level and the blood pressure level everything will be sensed and immediate action will be taken so these things are possible only with the sensors and the connectivity and that is what we need and we are doing it with the iot's 
and uh, coming to the key impact areas in healthcare actually it gives a continuous clinical care remote patient monitoring medication adherence early prevention and wellness uh, programs and also the applications of iot in uh, um, healthcare if you see the glucose uh, sensing for management of diabetes patients as we saw in the wearables and also the ecg the electrocardiogram monitoring for the measurement of heart rate and the rhythm and diagnosis of uh, um, harith mayas and also the blood pressure monitoring body temperature monitoring oxygen saturation monitoring and also it measures the heart congestion uh, which will lead to heart failure so these things when it is proactive and it is able to sense beforehand and it has a real time monitoring then definitely the iot's in healthcare is very mandatory very much required and first and foremost requirement in order to save the lives and coming to um, uh, the uh, application of iot can uh, have significant impact in the uh, improving access enhancing quality and lowering cost of care so this is another thing and improvement in outcomes if you see the access to real time information enables care providers to make informed decisions and provide evidence based treatment and also reduction of errors data collection without human intervention automated workflows and decisions based and actionable insights result in minimizing errors so these are all uh, the things which are going to help us and also application of iot can have significant impact in improving access enhancing quality and lowering cost of care it is better disease management continuous patient monitoring and access to real time data enables prevention and early treatment so this is what is very very essential and lowering of costs remote patient monitoring on a real time basis and providing home health care can reduce visits by doctors and hospital admissions see the main problem here is as the population is growing and uh, we have a more of uh, people falling sick you know uh, the if you see the proportion we don't have enough doctors we don't have enough beds we don't have enough hospitals to take care of the sick so this particular uh, remote uh, monitoring you know this will help to overcome all these challenges and also enhanced patient experience so the improved outcomes and reduction in errors actually and uh, the timely intervention results in a better patient experience people will feel more comfortable uh, when they go with such treatments and then coming to the smart cities and this is what is the arising market and every country has started thinking about and in the budget and in planning they wanted to bring in this smart city into existence that is a smart city is an urban area that uses different types of electronic methods and sensors to collect data so iot if you just wanted to think of iot the main thing what is happening here is it collects data and it collects data where the human cannot intervene also that is something which we have to uh, and also in real time so these are all the most important things which have, we have to keep in mind how it is going to Uh, protect us from a lot of uncertainties and also a lot of uh, proactive uh, safeguard methods that can be uh, that can be utilized or implemented with the help of the data being collected so data is something very very important and we need to know how to use the data so that is another thing because sensors will give you enormous data but how are we going to use the data so that is also very very important and the insights gained from the data are used to manage the assets resources and the services efficiently it can be of anything if you just see uh, taj mahal or any big monument is there and uh, we need to protect them it is one of the wonders of the world and it, you cannot you cannot know the flaw that has been happening in civil engineering this iot applications are going to help them like like anything so if there is a crack or there is some problem uh, in the monuments or in in the bridges or in any construction uh, uh, setup you know like uh, we will come to know only when it falls down so if you take an historical uh, monument like a uh, kutub uh, minar or uh, uh, something like taj mahal itself if you take people go visit see admire and come back like they may not have a 
check every day of the uh, the health of the uh, building so for to monitor the health of the building you need to have sensors a lot of vibration sensors are there a lot of sensors are there to sense uh, the health of uh, the buildings also so that will help you to protect and when you come across there is some problem in the bridge before it falls down you can go and rectify so the sensors are very very important especially in the life saving applications and i can uh, show you this uh, particular uh, smart city um, this example of smart city is a palo uh, alto in san francisco and it is the first city uh, uh, that took a whole new approach to control traffic actually and they realized that most cars on the streets go around and round the same block the, the problem is uh, the parking spots may not be available so we get frustrated when you go somewhere that you don't have a parking spot so this uh, city has uh, uh, brought in some changes and solutions for this and this is the main reason for traffic congestion actually when you don't have a parking slot then a lot of congestion happens in the city so the census the city installed the census at all the parking spots around the city and these census pass uh, the occupancy status of each spot to the cloud so the 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 parking slot will have census which will know the occupancy availability and how many are uh, already filled so the occupancy status Uh, will be sensed and that information will be given to the cloud and any number of applications can consume uh, that uh, data and it can guide the drivers through the shortest route to an open slot so this information goes to the people the, the people who are coming in the car you know the drivers will get the information that this this particular parking slot is already full and there is a space in a parking slot nearby your location so that will help the driver not to roam around searching for parking lots but he can go and easily park in a place where uh, he has space so this solution here involves the use of sensor array feeding back to a point which aggregates the data and uses it for various various purposes then um, uh, you can see in the slide that the smart city and the iot which have different origins are moving towards each other to achieve the common goal so the smart cities is one entity and the internet of things is one entity and they are coming together because from the needs toward technology smart city has a need and uh, it goes towards the technology and the internet of thing is a technology and it goes near the need what the smart cities are need so this is very very important so we believe that the sensing as a device or sensing as a service model resides in between these two with many other technological and business models and then you can see in the picture the efficient waste management in smart cities supposed supposed supported by the sensing as a service so wonderful thing happens in this like we have lot of complaints in our street we have a waste bin it gets filled up and nobody comes from the corporation to take up all these unwanted things from the dustbin and we get lot of bad smell and because of that lot of uh, pollution takes place lot of uh, insects come lot of mosquitoes come lot of diseases we get so these things are uh, the waste management is properly um uh, uh, properly managed using this sensing devices you can see that there is a garbage truck and it gets the information as soon as the the garbage uh, can gets filled up through the cloud and then um, um it goes to the recycling plant or the manufacturing plant or health and safety authorities all this message is been sent to all these places and the 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 particular uh, place will take uh, immediate action so we don't have to worry we don't have to physically go and check no need to have a person to come and check and do uh what is required it does and uh, it acts at automatically so that is what is the advantage and when you see this I iot application scenario in shopping when you are entering the doors 
the scanners will identify the tags on the cloth clothing actually and uh, then the, when you are shopping the goods will introduce themselves and then when uh, moving the goods the reader when you are taking the product automatically the reader will um, um uh, will read the barcode in the product and the the amount will be calculated because you have already taken it and when paying for the goods the microchip of the credit card will communicate with the checkout reader so everything comes automatically without any difficulty so that that is what is the thing and the smart lights a smart light is a light source that is equipped with sensors to collect the environmental parameters so that is very very important and also these parameters can be sent to the control system to identify for proper action and you can see this uh, uh, smart environment actually the smart environments like computers and other smart devices to everyday setting um, the tasks and also the smart environments includes the uh, energy management water management climate change and flood modeling smart lighting predictive lift maintenance traffic monitoring so entire thing is under control using this iot's and coming to the smart buildings so each smart city will have all these components and also each building will become smart so a smart building in any structure that uses automated process to automatically control the building's operations including heating ventilation air conditioning lightning lighting uh, security and other systems like everything will be uh, smart enough intelligent enough everywhere you will have sensors everywhere you will have uh, data collected and uh, the action uh, the the decision making and the action will be taken accordingly so the smart building uh, will give you a wonderful place to live in to and uh, also eliminates all sort of uh, difficulties that that may arise when you don't uh, when 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 it becomes unnoticed <clears throat> and the smart building uses sensors actuators microchips in order to collect the data and manage it according to a business functions and services and this infrastructure helps owners operators the facility managers improve their asset reliability and performance because there will be facility manager there will be a, uh, there will be a manager uh, association there will be uh, a security everybody will be there physically present but they may not know what is happening around so this is very 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 essential and this is mainly used in uh, reducing the energy use so energy optimization is used wherever there is not required you know like the lights will be switched off and it also optimizes how space is used and minimizes the environmental impact of the building so anything any uh, attempt of causing uh, uh, harm to the environment will also be sensed and it can be reduced and now you can see these smart stadiums they provide fans and staff with a wealth of information because now every one of us are seeing uh, the games from the tv we don't want to go to the stadium but why do we not go to uh, like to go to stadium we may not feel comfortable especially the parking uh, situation you know like it will be crowded if you go and park then if you want to come out you cannot come out you want the other car to be taken lot of problems will be there and you will not uh, have that comfortable feeling when you go to the stadium but the 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 uh, benefit or the experience what you are going to get by watching a match uh, by sitting in the stadium you cannot get by seeing through the uh, screens so the smart stadiums are also in in uh, a pipeline and uh, uh, what happens the smart stadiums will uh, provide the fans or the people who are coming to watch the game with wealth of information on parking availability the bathroom and the concession lines and the seat upgrades the special offers everything will be updated to their mobile phones and the fans will re receive a convenient personalized experience with shorter lines wherever there is a, a possible of uh, quickly getting the tickets all those things will be navigated by these iot's and in coming to this uh, retail industry again you can see that the retail stores constantly focusing on leveraging the emerging technologies like they use the cloud they use the mobile rfids um, a lot of improvements have come in the retail industry also they, this is mainly to provide connected retail services and better shopping experience to the customer so when you go 
to the shop you should feel comfortable and you should be able to uh, buy things comfortably only then the retail uh, people can do their business so that is where uh, the retail business is also going into this uh, to provide the big experience to the customers using this iot's then coming to the smart agriculture as i said this is very very essential the statistics estimate the ever growing world population to reach nearly 10 million 10 billion by the year 2050 so who will feed them to feed such a massive population one needs to marry agriculture to technology and obtain better results there should be an interaction between the agriculture and technology to know and to bring out the best and smart agriculture involves integration of advanced technologies in, into already persisting agricultural practices with a view to boost production quality and efficiency for farming products so you can see that the data insight um this uh, people uh, the the farmer will be knowing only with the data uh, uh, in the past you can see that uh, they were collecting some data so that was only uh, about the uh, uh, about the land level what is happening in the in the plant how it looks when it can be harvested all these things can be seen just about the uh, about the about the soil but here you can see uh, the 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 census which are kept below the uh, soil also will capture a lot of insights lot of data will be uh, collected and based on that also uh, the farmers can improve the quality of uh, the harvest and also they can improve the quality and uh, the health of the plants actually so this uh, this is very very essential for uh, this uh, so the uh, especially this smart agriculture and uh, it also helps in automated farming with the collection of data for further analysis to provide the operator with the accurate information for better decision making to gain high quality output of the product so they need to have the correct data only then the research like you see the data goes to the microbiologist agriculturist bioscientist agricultural scientist academic institutions and students so all the sensor data collected through variety of different and complex sensors will help them to take a lot of good decision which will be an efficient and effective collaborative approach with the research institute because one unless you know the uh, what is happening there what is the quality there you will not be able to take any decision further so agriculture is an important part of smart cities as it contributes to the food supply chain that facilitates a large number of communities concentrated into the cities and uh, the sensing as a service model allows to conduct scientific research and exploration more effectively and efficiently now coming to the industrial automation application of the iots this is one of the fields where both faster developments as well as the quality of products are the critical factors for a higher return on investment so this is an ultimate place where iots are going to play a major role so with this iot applications one could even reengineer products and their packaging to deliver better performance in both cost and the customer experience so iot here can prove to be a game changing with solutions for all the domains whatever problems they have they will be resolved something like the factory digitalization product flow monitoring inventory management safety and security quality control packaging optimization logistics and supply chain optimization just imagine all these things are going to get resolved with our iots then you can see how how these people the, the factory owners the manufacturers the industrialists can concentrate on product development they can concentrate on research they don't have to worry about all other things so that is what we need to relieve those people from the routine monotony work and then concentrate using their creativity and the critical thinking concentrate on new products come become uh, an innovator bring new products and bring improve their quality and etc so this is what 
this is how a smart factory is going to look a smart factory is a highly digitized and connected production facility that relies on smart manufacturing actually so that to be uh, this is what is a so called factory this is how it is going to be and um, um, some min, uh, manufacturing companies have already started using this you can see in tesla um, the entire uh, the factory uh, the the cars are manufactured only by robots there is no single human working there so that that sort of automation and use of iot is have been implemented uh, in many of the uh, places in many other countries actually and uh, uh, these uh, smart factory works by employing technology such as artificial intelligence robotics analytics uh, big data and uh, the internet of things so all these things are required as i said in industry 4.0 is dependent on all these things and the extensive use of iot sensors and devices connects the machines and enables the visibility into their condition as well as into the factory processes creating an industrial internet of things so they call it as iiot so this is what is very essential and people are looking forward for giving solutions for many of the problems and they need to know the um, um, condition of the factory and what is happening there in many many areas and let us see some use cases in the industries like uh, the digital or connected factory facility management asset uh, management safety security operations logistics customer preference and behavior services and predictive maintenance quality control packaging and shipping preparation product flow monitoring condition based alert so these are all the things uh, which is uh, required and uh, when we talk about uh, this iot innovations in business how it can assist actually speaking you know the investment uh, in iot by uh, businesses is growing and uh, iot innovations uh, in business aren't limited to the uh, fortune 500 enterprises people may feel that it is only for big companies with huge um, uh, um, infrastructure economy and um, uh, the turnovers no it's not required for, because um, uh, we have a lot of things lot of uh, sensors are coming with uh, lower cost now anybody any small uh, smes and mmes can uh, have have it in their companies and let us see how it helps first one is the remote monitoring so the skilled labor shortage there are uh, many companies have labor but many of them are not skilled the 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 reason why the uh, engineering uh, graduates are not getting job is they are not engineers they are just graduates with marks and they just have the book knowledge so that experience and the skill expertise is uh, uh, is lacking like anything in, uh, in in the students and the people who are coming the people who are joining they don't have the skill sets and they don't recruit them because there is no point in taking them without skill sets and the skilled labor shortage has arguably impacted the manufacturing sector more than any other industry so uh, when they bring in some new technology you know people do not know how to use it how to work with it and uh, they use this robotics and the monitoring systems is now growing because instead of having a human do that job no they, they are doing it with the robots and uh, they, they are growing to help fill the gap actually so even smaller job shops are leveraging automation to gain a competitive advantage so the iot allows organizations to remotely monitor various parts of their operations to allow production to continue around the clock around the clock the production will be going on even if the workers aren't there in the factory floor even if the factory floor the workers are not there they will be able to uh, use the sensors and they will be able to use automation to know what is happening and who is there the sensors which used uh, uh, to be very costly earlier have come down uh, to the price uh, very low price in the recent years and it is going to come down still uh, lower so that everybody can assess it and these sensors are attached to the machines to measure the temperature vibration pressure and other mechanical elements and they can notify when they are in need of ma any maintenance and uh, the technicians if a uh, set uh, some threshold it will be set and if it exceeds also they can perform preventive maintenance and avoid downtime so this is one thing which is a with which causes uh, damage also loss in any manufacturing industry that the maintenance 
they, they don't do the preventive maintenance. So these sensors will help them to get an alarm about the preventive maintenance. And this will also help them avoid the downtime. And this will help them to improve their productivity and also reduce the loss. So this kind of visibility into an operation uh, increases productivity, efficiency, and product quality. Second one is the inventory management. The use of barcoding systems in inventory management has been in use for years. But some of these tracking systems, however, still required someone to physically scan individual parts to get an accurate count or location. So one has to stand there and scan uh, to get uh, the number of uh, the, the products which are there, you know, like uh, they have to have an inventory management. Uh, you can see from this uh, figure that one should go uh, directly go and check. So warehouses and retail settings are now becoming smarter. They're using sensors. He's using a sensor. And uh, with that, he is able to count the RFID chips will be there. Uh, the cost, uh, they are cost effective only and they can be placed on the products and remotely connected to the technology to create a real time visibility into the product locations and quantities. So from wherever you are, you can see how many products are left and where they are placed, whether they, the, the, even the security of the product can be achieved using these things. And built-in GPS, the products, if you have a GPS, it can even allow an organization to pinpoint an item location during shipping. So if they're going to send it to the customer, they're going to transport it, uh, if, if they're going to ship them, the RFID will let them know uh, where it is, where the product is. So that is another thing. And an additional advantage of this system uh, types of tracking is uh, especially used in food storage facilities. So you will know the expiry date and other things and it can uh, help. it can help you to uh, make use of it within the time. And also, uh, when it comes to security, um, um, uh, cloud security reminds all, always, you know, like uh, the data, when you talk about data, uh, definitely there will be security issues. And um, all the data flowing back and forth through the networks and the cloud can uh, present opportunities for hackers. Um, uh, many, many uh, hackers are there to steal information. but um uh, the cloud offers more uh, robust security than the traditional servers and as you know iot innovations emerge greater scrutiny will be given to making sure that they are secure and safe and coming to the energy uh, energy efficiency this is very important for any factory or in any man man manufacturer and the smart meters you can see this nest and tado the smart meters are most common example of connected devices right now. And the businesses are getting them installed to keep the energy cost low. And with this um, uh, sensors and tracking devices, such as, as I said, TADO and NEST, um, the Hive is one, uh, one more thing. Actually, you can monitor and manage an entire building remotely and thereby improve. You can improve the energy efficiency and the cost savings also is possible. And next is the to improve the production quality. When uh, an MSME is manufacturing products across multiple sites or multiple product lines at the same site, smart monitors can track and access, and also it can assess product quality or the production quality in the real time. So uh, you will be you are, you are the owner of the industry or the company or sitting in one place. You may be in Delhi for some meeting or you're abroad. You wanted to know what happens in India in your uh, uh, company. So that possibility is also there to know the quality of your product wherever you are. And then comes the customer support. So you can build Internet of Things technology into your current products that could track various small functions like when the battery is dying and when your product is not performing and when the product needs maintenance. All these things can be sensed and the, the customer can be made um, uh, very happy because the company will get the information about the customer product when it needs a uh, 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 maintenance and also you can uh, schedule some time to support that device and then very very important is health monitoring of the machines this is very very important and uh, the uh, iot condition monitoring the manufacturers are uh, increasingly turning to iot driven machine conditioning monitoring why which helps uh, to reveal 
the the equipment issues mainly the manufacturing uh, industries would have invested a lot in in those, in those machines and equipments and they need to monitor check the equipment and uh, calibration in real time that will keep their product quality high so that is the main thing and the condition monitoring enables product quality control by detecting the combinations of equipment health such as uh, some some uh, some products or some machines may have uh, the spindles the spindle uh, vibration frequency they can check or the engine temperature they can check and the cutting speed they can check and also uh, uh, they should take care of the ambient uh, temperature and the environmental conditions like humidity temperature and other uh, environmental parameters also so all these things can be detected and which will keep the machines in proper health so uh, this is what is very important i'll tell you an example in the paper pulp industry uh, iot allows the monitoring the condition of the rollers in the paper machines actually because the rollers are very very important in a paper industry and the defect of just one roller bearing can significantly affect the quality of uh, the produced paper and can cause fluffing and change in paper thickness because uh, the speed in which it rolls the vibration cost in the rotation everything will uh, cause or uh, which will uh, uh, bring in some damage in the quality of the paper that is being produced so monitoring the condition of the roller bearings with vibration sensors is enough to avoid a large percentage of quality issues so though there the the vibration sensors uh, is very very essential and iot plays a major role in that and the vibration sensors on each end of the roller continuously gather real time data about the roller health and relate to the cloud server so if a roller does not function properly an iot solution alerts an operator so if the the cloud senses the data and if it exceeds the threshold or comes below the threshold it understands that there is some problem in the roller and the vibration sensor senses that and it alerts the operator so the operator will immediately take care of that and the quality of the products produced can be brought into control then coming to the electronics uh, industry in the process of mounting semiconductors on the circuit boards the tiny puffs of airs are used to direct the placement of chips actually the placement machines are calibrated according to the current environmental condition when they uh, calibrate the machine it will be uh, on that particular day whatever may be the environmental conditions like temperature and humidity that will be calibrated but they don't do it every day but a minor change in the temperature parameters generates a heat profile that can cause placement defects so the temperature and humidity sensors are used there to monitor the environment in which the machines operate so once a change is detected a machine can receive a command to make calibration adjustments to meet the quality standards so that is very important there and then coming to the automotive industry in automotive industry the penetration of the moisture into the spaces or gaps in the welding spots can lead to porosity while um, temperature variations in welding machines can lead to a uh, weld joint fracture that that is what they call it as a temperature variation can uh, cause a weld joint fracture so all these things are to be monitored so iot or the industrial iot iiot i can call it as iiot is applied to monitor the temperature and the level of humidity around the machine to avoid incorrect placement and ensure high quality of the welded products just you can imagine how much it is going to save the time save money and also produce quality products in manufacturing industries and then iot in motor insurance premium you can see that when you buy a car you know all these things are taken care and due to the rapid economic and technological growth there is an increase in the density of motorized cars everybody is having car and the future of the automotive uh, industry is to turn the vehicle into a valuable partner using the iot where every device is connected to the internet and the automotive industry is heading uh, to a self driving autonomous car also we all have known about it the self driving autonomous car and uh, which can give an impact to use these vehicles which can reduce the accident rate so people feel that the human error causes a uh accidents and if it is automized and automated the sensors will take care 
and they will not get diverted like how human do and they can uh, take action appropriately and we can avoid accidents and uh, and also some even now you know like some automated cars or the the digitized cars you know uh, not automated cars but digitized uh, cars the lo latest cars with a lot of digital uh, uh, things you know sensors available uh, there was an incident when one, one person uh, got stuck and uh, the, the, there was a problem in the car, he was not able to start and he gave a ca call to the ca customer service because uh, the latest cars cannot be taken to a normal mechanic because they are all having a lot of electronic uh, technology inbuilt and the local mechanic will not be able to rectify that. So they, he called a customer service and someone picked the call. It got di di directed to some, some other, um, um, other uh, what to say, other section. And one person spoke to the customer, asked him the problem and he said, just wait for a few minutes. Then the customer was waiting. He was not knowing like uh, how to start the car, how to go about and how to move from here. He was in an uh, emergency. So he was restless and he was waiting in another five, ten minutes. There was a call from the company saying that you can uh, proceed with your journey and all the problems are rectified from uh, from the company itself. So they had a uh, internet um, sensing device and um, they are digitally connected and uh, uh, the, the using the, the connectivity and the sensors, you know, like the person from the R&D and from the uh, service uh, section, he was able to rectify it from the company uh, to the customer place. He, he need not come to the customer place in person, but he could rectify the problem of the customer. Now just see the satisfaction of the customer. So it can make the customers feel so happy and comfortable in order to have such a service with no time, within no time. You don't have to wait for uh, a mechanic to come or he need not give the vehicle to a, a company to have a service is done so all these things are existing and coming and it's improving day by day so the connected car may transform to a mobile data rooms which can lead to a virtual product features and services so data can be collected and transmitted via wireless communication to the cloud computing for the future uh, any future information also some of the functions of the connected car, you can have this stolen vehicle tracking, automatic roadside assistance in ca case of crashes, information comes to um, telematic service provider, vehicle updates, remote service and video streaming. So insurance industry is a major part of changing with uh, the use of the IoT to transform it into a new and exciting ways. So with the integration of uh, various sensors of existing vehicle technology, you know, the driver, um, assistance systems can be developed and uh, implemented with the purpose of increasing road safety and also the driver awareness. So the IoT can change the conventional insurance industry to an insurance technology that can benefit companies and the consumer. So the use of sensors and the actuators in vehicles, why do they use it? They are useful for the customer to have the real time information about their vehicle to avoid any occurrence of untoward events. Every one of us feel that when we start our journey in our car, we don't want any untoward event to happen, any breakdown or any problem in the, in the car. So then we can have a comfortable journey with the family and we can come back safely. So this is why the sensors and actuators in the vehicle are very, very useful. And the customer also can make decision on buying a car insurance coverage according to the data collected by their car. So the uh, usage based insurance, they call it as uh, UBI. And uh, this has been implemented in several countries across the world. And the internet is used to send information of uh, the real time driver data to the cloud computing platform and the insurance company. Uh, they, they can use the data to make the analysis to the driver behavior. So sometimes the insurance uh, people may say that the driver, um, uh, you have done the mistake. They don't want to pay the money. So they can also monitor and analyze the driver behavior so that they can recommend a good coverage insurance plan for their customers. So this is how even IOTs help in insurance. And the uh, next one is idea of smart digital campus.
So here, the small digital campus nowadays increase uh, in demand for higher education institutions to digitalize the learning and administrative process in the digital environment. The design of the physical infrastructure with the integration of technology will impact the teaching, learning, and research experience to encourage the student on lifelong learning. You can just see this uh, smart classroom and the uh, immersive learning you can have you can see the tactile internet and skill set communication possible and this virtual reality you just have to think about how this augmented reality and this virtual reality is going to help people you know like it creates an amb uh, ambience you can just see this picture um, uh, a biology student you know like uh, a teacher will be teaching the parts of the body by drawing uh, the part of the body on the uh, the board blackboard or they she or he may show a, a, a chart to explain the parts of the body and here you can see using this augmented reality and the virtual reality a person can wear this uh, vr uh, glass and uh, when you wear that glass you get immersed into that particular environment so you will get a feel of uh, entering into a human body touching the heart lungs and kidney and other uh, places and when you learn you know like you can get the feel of touching that particular part and learn so it gives an immersive experience so in um, in, in classrooms all these technologies are going to give um, 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 amazing uh, results and also um, the, the students will have an experiential learning they'll feel so good to uh, uh, learn through this type of technologies and you they'll get a personalized feel of learning and uh, the, these are all most important the smart digital campus can reduce the operational cost also it can also improve the security and offers the technology the tools for student as well as the staff so uh, the smart digital campus comprises in uh, two main component which is the connectivity which use the it service delivery platform to make the connection all over the digital campus so that one part they have to uh, think about the connectivity to uh, to develop a digital campus and the iot devices to support the service platform to enhance the student learning and management and uh, we, we are seeing a lot of connected devices than people if you just see the world uh, population you know compared to uh, the million of devices uh, you can see that the device number as it uh, increases you know in 2020 it is something like 50 billion connected devices is what is predicted and uh, connected devices per person you know uh, you can see uh, it was in 2003.08 2010 1.84 2015 3.47 and 2020 it is 6.58 so many devices are connected to a person so iot was born sometime uh, between 2008 and 2009 today iot is well uh, underway as initiatives um, such as uh, smart grid and intelligent vehicles uh, it continues its uh, process and uh, the smart buildings you, you, we have seen how it works and uh, it, it, it can generate nearly 100 billion dollars by lowering the operating cost by reducing the energy consumption all those things uh, when you when you're uh, talking about the safety security energy consumption all the water consumption um, environmental safety all these things you know like in a smart building it can um, um, generate 100 billion dollars by reducing the loss of wastage and then the second one is smart parking actually it can create nearly 41 billion us dollars by providing visibility into the availability of parking spaces across the city so the re residents can identify and reserve the closest available parking space which makes them feel happy and comfortable they don't have to worry about uh, going out during um, uh, any uh, marriage functions or a, any big uh, event or anything you know like parking becomes a big headache then water management this is very very important and it could generate 39 billion us dollars by connecting the household water meter 
to know like how much you're using and uh, things get interesting when these connected devices and services start creating compound applications within their own verticals and across industries how it happens for example transportation and smart cities so uh, you can see how it happens sofia and her son louis are on their way downtown for an appointment wireless sensors embedded in the parking lot help direct the car to an open spot in the city while also initiating the parking fee so using the car's parking details the vehicle schedules a mobile mechanic to change the oil while the two are away for the afternoon so it helps you to know what is happening so transportation and uh, smart cities and healthcare and smart home an aging uncle earl is still living isolated at his home and you are concerned about his safety so wireless sensors throughout his house help measure healthy activity live levels sleeping patterns and medication schedule so alerts are automatically sent to the healthcare services and authorized family members if any abnormal activity is detected so even if your parents many of my, my classmates are in abroad and they have their elderly parents in india and they they worry about their safety so such healthcare and smart home will help uh, and support the elderly people also and immediately they will call for uh the, the 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 healthcare attention when they are in need and smart buildings and mobility so anna is being pressurized to reduce her company's expenses for their new corporate office so after speaking with experts she decides to install sensors to automate energy usage according to building occupancy people flow temperature and other ambient conditions thereby improving the building's overall efficiency so this sort of uh, um, savings especially in any company you know like people want cost reduction and they wanted to improve uh, the profit so uh, as an employee as a manager as a, a responsible person you can make use of the iot's for getting the same and growth of things connected to the internet during 2008 the number of people on earth exceed the number of things connected to the internet 2008 and now by 2020 there will be 50 billion things so that is what uh, is the uh, growth you can see that the yellow indicates the uh, people and blue indicates the things and you can see how it increases and now in 2020 the people are very very less and the things are increasing like anything and the internet gave us the opportunity to connect in ways we could never have dreamed possible the internet of things will take us beyond connection to become part of a living moving global nervous system and whether you are an individual technology developer or adopter of these technologies the internet of things will stretch the boundaries of today's system are you prepared for the changes in the way we will learn work and innovate and another thing is big data so lot of uh, devices are sensing lot of data you know it collects numerous data so big data is another area which has to be taken into account and you can see this data is an integral part to iot's you can see that common iot standards and framework hospitals and doctors healthcare and insurance companies appliance providers facility management retail stores application developers utilities um manufacturing industries city authorities public transport companies logistics companies regulators ict infrastructure providers consumers consumer equipment providers they are all in the framework and you can see the levels to start with the sensors devices machines the intelligent edge nodes of all types so the first level is the physical devices and the controls they are the things in the ioe and then the connectivity as we have seen about the connectivity that is used for communication and processing the units and next is edge computing this is what is very very important and uh, the data element analysis and 
transformation and then comes the data accumulation the storage and then the data abstraction the aggregation and the access level and then the application that is uh, uh, reporting the analytics and the control and collaboration and process that is involving people and the business process so this is what is the different levels and then big data or iot every minute we send 204 million emails which generate 1.8 million Facebook likes, sent 278,000 tweets, and upload 200,000 photos to Facebook. And 12 million RFID tags used to capture data and track movement of objects in the physical world were sold in 2011. By 2021, it is estimated this number will increase to 209 billion as big data or IoT takes off. So big data is closely associated with IoTs and the boom of big data or IoT will remind or mean that the amount of devices that connect to the internet will raise from about 13 billion to 50 billion. We are in 2020 now, it exceeds that also and the big data or IoT industry is expected to grow from 10.2 US billion dollars to and coming to the life data actually it is used to acquire acquire data and process the data and you can see this man Chris Dancy with the gadgets he is the world's most connected man he has a google glass which is voice controlled ips computer within an optical head mounted display and similar functionality to a smartphone and he has a narrative uh, camera which is pinned to his chest he takes photo every couple of seconds and he has a blue hr heart rate monitor and a pebble watch it gathers and displays data from sensors and he has a lumo back strapped around his waist measures posture and gives a signal when you stouch so uh, he has so many things to uh, collect data and moto x galaxy apps primarily monitor and control environmental remotely and he has a fitbit uh, wrist mounted sensors measure physical performance and uh, uh, you can see that uh, the body media fit so it is an arm band with multiple sensors to measure the body's performance awake or asleep so he is the one who is uh, maximum uh, connected and you can uh, see all the data collected from the sensors what he has in his arm in his uh, wrist in his waist in his shirt in his chest all these are data collected uh, from this person from these sensing devices the activities the total places he visited and how did he sleep and his health uh, health uh, uh, condition and how many steps he walked and uh, uh, all details everything is collected he, he is the one who has maximum uh, uh, connections and uh, coming to the iot and security Almost 90% of the devices collect personal information such as name, address, date of birth, email, credit card number, etc. And unencrypted format onto the cloud and bio big data thus endangering the privacy of users. So uh, this is a place for hackers. The top barriers to IoT and M2M adoption, machine to machine adoption is the security. So we have seen a lot of use cases, applications that it is a very, very important thing. But we also have some barriers, which is the security. And then comes the regulation or compliance issues, complexity of solutions, cost of M2M services, and lack of information about available services and solutions, lack of information about the benefits of M2M services. They all are barriers are less compared to the security. 
So IoT installed base will grow to 26 billion units by 2020. The number might be low. Every sensor in any device could be in bracelet in every home, office, building, or hospital room, in every city, village, or anywhere in the earth, especially the hospital patient data. data is very very important and data is available everywhere every uh, mobile every door every room everywhere we have uh, the thing and internet of thing risks if you see uh, wearable devices collect a huge amount of personal data as well as the surrounding environment in, in information you can see and significant impact on privacy rights of these technologies will require a careful review and great concern for health related sensitive data we have to be very very careful with the patient data and um, uh, the botnets are already a major threat. ThinkBot is a botnet consisting of devices within the Internet of Things and vulnerable or infected appliances that are connected to the Internet could potentially pose a risk to corporate networks. And also number of attacks against routers, a smart TV, network attached storage devices, gaming consoles and various type of set of boxes is increasing. And the hacking smartwatch. Data sent between the smartwatch and an Android mobile phone could be intercepted. An attacker that could be able to decode users' data, including text messages to Google Handout, Hangout chats and Facebook conversations. Bluetooth communication between most smartwatches and Android devices relies on six-digit pins. Easy to crack with a brute force attack and mitigate the attack with NFC pairing procedure in pin code exchange or use of pass phrases. And the top security problems is insecure web interface, insufficient authentication, insecure network services, lack of support, transport encryptions, privacy concerns, insecure cloud interface, insecure mobile interface, insufficient security configurability, insecure software, and poor physical visibility capacity. And you can see the global IoT implementation. In Canada, they started in 2010, uh, the healthcare, e-commerce, education, government, public sector, and the smart city. And in Europe, started in 2011, smart cities and communities, cognitive IoT, smart objects, smart transportation. Europe and Japan started in 2013. And Cloud joined European Japanese ICT project for smart cities and Russia 2020 target. And vehicles, smart parking, smart cities, payment terminals, devices and sensors. And Korea started in 2003. Smart cities, smart government and 2014 5G network, technology, intelligent networks. And Japan started in 2010. Uh, home energy management, uh, transport. And uh, applications, they have vending machines, transportation management, surveillance, uh, and e-wallet uh, services in China started in 2005, uh, traffic systems and IoT, and 2011, food safety and healthcare in remote and rural areas in Australia. They started in 2010, and uh, in India started in 2010, in South Africa started in 2010, and USA started in 2010. So a lot of things are happening around in, in, in case of this IoT implementations. And uh, the app development tools, one has to um, uh, get an expertise on all these app development tools. And uh, the future job roles, when we talk about the opportunities, the job roles for a person who can work on the IoT platforms, he can be an embedded system programmer, cloud support engineer, information security analyst, solution architect, business analyst, hardware design engineer, a designer, computer vision engineer, and a UI UX designer, network wireless specialist, software engineer, platform developer, data scientist, testing engineer, IoT app developer, a data architect, and so on and so forth. There are a lot of opportunities and a lot of scope for this IoT is throughout the world and one need to um, become an expert and understand the needs and also it is a collaborative uh, technology where every discipline anybody with any discipline can be a part of working with IOTs and uh, they, they can just do their job and there are a lot of areas 
uh, together um, uh, brings out a solution or an application and so uh, everyone who is interested in this particular growing area it is uh, something which is the future future job roles and a lot of uh, opportunities for this can uh, seek for uh, required data take training and uh, they can uh, enhance their knowledge and they can take up this as a career this is going to be a mind blowing future for all the um, engineers and all those people who are in this area. Thank you so much. I conclude my um, session with this. Uh, so, uh, participants, if you are having any doubts, you can uh, please open to this session. Ma'am? Yes, sir. I'm um, shall we wind up now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so, on behalf of Sri Krishna College of Engineering and Technology, uh, so I thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, so, it was a nice session and it is a wonderful, uh, informative session uh, regarding the Internet of Things and uh, that too, uh, so how it is uh, enhanced in uh, the healthcare applications. Uh, so, thank you very much, ma'am. So, on behalf of participants also, uh, so I'm just thanking in this particular forum. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.